Hi everyone, Dr. Bruce here. So in today's video, we're going to be learning about the neural control of respiration or how the nervous system controls respiration. So let's begin by reviewing a little bit about the diaphragm. So here's the diaphragm. Remember the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle which is dome shaped and separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. It sits at the base of the thoracic cavity and when it contracts, it pulls downward, increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity, which lowers the pressure. So air follows a pressure gradient, goes from the higher pressure outside of the lungs to the lower pressure inside of the lungs. And that's how inhalation occurs. Now there are some accessory muscles involved. You might remember the external intercostals, the sternocleidomastoids and the pectoralis minors also assist in inhalation. So the question then is what controls the diaphragm? <clears throat> well, there are a pair of nerves called the phrenic nerves. And so the phrenic nerves attach to both sides of the diaphragm and they emerge from three nerve roots, three cervical nerve roots, C3, 4, and 5. In fact, there's a saying that says C3, 4, and 5 keeps the diaphragm alive, which means that if there's, a da if there's damage or injury to this area, the patient may not be able to breathe on their own. So what controls the phrenic nerve? Well, it turns out there are some centers in the brainstem. And you remember the brainstem has three parts. There's the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. So there are two centers in the pons and two centers in the medulla. The two centers in the pons together are called the, pon the pontine respiratory centers or pons respiratory centers. They include the pontine center and the apneustic center. The two centers in the medulla are the dorsal and ventral respiratory groups. So these are groups of neurons that control respiration. So let's look at the medullary centers first. Of the two centers in the medulla, the dorsal respiratory group is a little more important because I call it the always on center. It regulates breathing rate and rhythm. So it's like the main regulator in the brainstem. The ventral respiratory group is only involved in forceful inhalation. So when you take in a deep breath, that's coming from the ventral respiratory group. But what about the pond centers, the pontine and amnustic centers? These are a little more complicated. In fact, there's a very complicated process that occurs between the pond centers and the medullary centers. So what I do typically in my classes is I just summarize the pond centers. And I basically say that they fine tune the breathing. They work with the medullary centers to fine tune breathing. So, you know, the respiratory rate will vary depending on the needs of the body. And these two areas work together to provide the body with oxygenated blood. So then what else controls respiration between, besides, I should say, the, uh, the centers in the brainstem? Well, the centers in the brainstem work automatically. So these are unconscious. You don't have to think about it. They automatically control breathing. But then the higher brain centers, like there is conscious control as well. You can override the brainstem centers consciously. So you can hyperventilate right now if you want or hold your breath or control your breathing, however you want to do it. The conscious centers can override the uh, brainstem centers. Also, emotion plays a role. So the limbic system uh, can also have some sort of control over breathing. If you're nervous, your breathing increases and, and so on. So then what are these centers sensitive to? What do they monitor in the blood in order to control breathing? They're sensitive to three things, pH, carbon dioxide, and oxygen levels in the blood. And so oxygen is pretty logical. You think, right, the respiratory system is going to monitor oxygen levels. You know, that sounds pretty logical, but it turns out that even though they're sensitive to these three things, they're more sensitive to carbon dioxide and pH. And what we will learn in future videos is that, that the respiratory system is a very big regulator of pH in the blood. So they're very sensitive to carbon dioxide and pH. All right, so hopefully uh, this helps with your understanding of the of neural regulation of respiration, and we'll see you next time.